and today we're gonna to work on an MS290. Uh, a friend of mine said he just couldn't get his chainsaw running, uh, so I said if you drop it off, I'll take a look at it on the weekend, uh, and he did. And um, I'm gonna go over everything you need to do if you have a chainsaw that just will not run. So let's go. First thing you wanna do is check the fuel, make sure it's good. Uh, sometimes it smells good, but it uh, is just dead. I don't know what it is with modern fuel, but um, it can be dead and it can smell perfectly good. So we're going to drain this out. Fuel it up with fresh fuel. So that doesn't look good. I'm gonna throw this in the vise. So now we know that the fuel is okay. We're gonna check to see if it has spark. Uh, if it doesn't have spark, she ain't gonna fire anyways. It's really handy to have a spark tester because on these newer chainsaws, you pretty well have plastic. So there's nowhere to set the uh, spark plug and pull it over to see if it sparks. So what I do is I take this and put it right on the chain and bar. So now we're gonna pull it over and see if we got spark. So now we know we have good fuel in it, we have spark. So I'm gonna throw a little bit of gas down the carb and we're gonna see if it'll fire up. If it doesn't fire up, um, I know it's more than just a dirty carburetor not getting fuel to the uh, engine. Um, then we'll have to do a compression test and stuff like that. But first thing we're going to do is throw a little bit of fuel down the carburetor. Another thing you look for is the air cleaner is nice and clean, and it is. He must have blew it off. You give it a little squirt and you pull it over. Okay, so she doesn't fire up. So now we know we got fresh fuel uh, and there, even if you put fuel down the carburetor, it won't fire, we got spark. So it basically eliminates the carburetor uh, being plugged up because if I put gas in it directly, it should fire up. So now we're gonna check the compression, uh, see how good it is, because if you don't have enough compression, it's not gonna run either. Compression is basically when the piston goes to the top, um, there's a little tiny gap of air where it really compresses the air, and that's when it has fuel in there and the ignition, and it will fire. Uh, if you don't have enough compression, it won't run because you don't have enough air compressed into that space. Um, so. If you don't have a compression tester, there's kind of a quick way to do it, uh, but it really isn't that accurate. But it does give you a little bit of an idea how good your engine is. I'll show you. A quick way to do a compression test without a uh, compression tester, you can hold the pull cord and let go of the chainsaw. And if the chainsaw hits the floor, there isn't enough compression for the engine to run. That is a real quick way for you to test the compression on a uh, chainsaw. Like if you're at a garage sale or if you're buying one, you can just do that without having to actually uh, hook a gauge to it or check it or anything like that. Okay, so I really wanna see what the compression really is in this, so I'm gonna hook up the gauge. Very clean spark plug. This is a very old compression tester, but it still works. I'm gonna screw that in. So now we're gonna check the compression and we should at least have 140. So let's see what it is. We barely have 90, okay? So that is why your chainsaw isn't running.
If you have a chainsaw with marginal compression, it'll be hard to start. If you have a chainsaw with low compression, it just won't start at all. Uh, the main reasons why you have a uh, chainsaw with low compression is it's either overheated or someone uh, didn't put enough oil in their uh, gas mix or just put straight gas in. Those are the main reasons why uh, you'll have bad compression. So now we're gonna pop the exhaust off and see if the piston is scuffed. I'm pretty much assuming that's what happened and that's a sign that it overheated um, or ran lean or whatever. So we're gonna pop the exhaust off and see if the piston's scuffed. And if that's the case, we're gonna have to order up a piston and a cylinder uh, and then we'll have to rebuild it. But let's see if that'll be. Okay, so there you go. We're gonna set the exhaust over there. So if you look in there, you can see all the score marks on the piston and the ring gets stuck into the piston and you don't have compression. So that's the problem he has. So what I'm gonna to have to do is price out a new piston and cylinder and uh, I'll see how fast I can get that. So you'll, there'll be a video probably fixing that in the near future. So that's about enough for today and you guys have a good one.